what's the story guys, um, I'm here today to give you a tutorial on how to install a boost controller, a HKS EVC Type S uh, boost controller. The reason why I'm posting this video is because when I went online to try and get more clarity because the manual is kind of confusing to, to follow, um, I couldn't really find anything. I could find a lot of stuff for the HKS, um, the EVC 5, 6, 4, but nothing for the S. Um, so I'm going to show you. It's fairly straightforward. It works. I'm going to. I'll show you on my um, 200 SX. And this is an S14. What you will find in the kit is the display unit, the control unit, the boost sensor, the solenoid valve, the power supply, and all the T's fittings and everything like that. All you might need to get is boost line, because um, I found that the boost line that the kit gave me wasn't enough, so I went out and bought some of my own. Um, I'm going to bring you over to the engine bay now and show you what I started with installing first and where I installed it. Okay, so this is my um, S14, uh, fairly stock. Uh, the only thing it has on it now is a boost controller. Um, it has a full decadent stainless exhaust, um, basically straight pipe, and it has an intake. That is it. Um, a blow off valve, if you can count that as a modification, I don't. Okay, so this is your the solenoid that you're going to get. You're going to get this solenoid here. This solenoid here, if you ha haven't installed this before, what is there in the factory location is the factory boost solenoid. You can unplug that. I took it off. It's not giving me any trouble. It's not causing any issues. I took it off and I plumbed this in straight away. And then, over here, just down there, right in here, you can see it there, all the way there, that is the... Um, the boost unit, that um, gives you a boost pressure and sends it back to the control unit. Um, what I've done to install these, uh, you'll, get two, you'll get two wires coming out, your positive and negative, and it's just a normal solenoid valve. The um, T going in to your normally open is, um, is from boost reference. This uh, pipe is from your boost source, so it's reading straight from the boost source straight into normally open. Then this pipe here is going down to my wastegate. This is what controls your wastegate opening. So if you set your PSI above, say now, if you set your PSI above 12, that that will not send a uh, positive pressure to the wastegate for the wastegate to open, so your wastegate will stay closed, hence giving you 12 PSI at the turbo. Then what I did here is I have, I have an aftermarket blow off valve. There is my the boost, um, the vacuum going to it. Uh, what I did was I teed into the vacuum. I just teed straight into the vacuum, as you can see here. Um, around the wires, the wire up here, all the way around, all the way in, and into that hole there. That hole goes straight into the cabin. Same for the pig connector, I ran mine around, past the ABS module, all the way down there, as you can see, in, and then into that hole as well. We're going to go into the car now, and I'll show you what I've done inside the car. Okay, so inside the car, I've installed the module, um, the display unit here. Um, it's not really in the way of anything. So that's why I display there. It's right in my line of sight. I can look down quickly, see what my boost pressure is, um, see what I've set my PSI to, and it'll actually flash after every gear, after every time the blow valve goes off, it'll flash and tell me what the boost pressure I got up to, which I find really uh, convenient. Down there, right there on the footwell, I've installed the control unit. The reason why I installed the control unit is because um, it just made it easier for wires, because you're putting those wires through the engine bay. They're coming through the engine bay and coming into the footwell. Then they're, then they're looping around because they're too long and they're going into the control unit. If I was to put it on this side of the car, I'm scared of passengers kicking it and not being careful. At least on this side, I can keep control of it. I, I won't hit it with my foot. I know where it is. If I need to unplug it, I can just quickly unplug it. Or if I need anything to change, I can change by myself. Then what I've done is I routed the wires through this. It goes through the back through here, comes in, comes around, then goes in through the actual back under here. Under here and the wires come out and they go in there. Into the, um, into the control unit. Now, what I've done for the power, I've taken my power off the um, cigarette lighter. The reason why I've done this is because it's a switchable power unit, so only when the car is in accessory mode, they'll switch on, and only when the car is on, they'll switch on. Um, I've connected it with um, female and male butt connectors, so um, they just slide in and out, so if I ever need to, I can just quickly unplug them, throw everything back the way it is stock, and I can just take out my whole um, EVC unit. Um, I will switch it on now, and I'll give you a quick demonstration of what I've learned so far about this unit, and um, how I've set mine up. Okay, so I'll switch her on now to accessory mode, and I'll just show you what happens. Okay, so that's her on. 
Now, I'll try and get a good um, image of it so I can explain it as best I can. Okay, as you can see, it's because there's, there's no PSI showing at the minute because the car is off. But um, it's on A. Uh, that is my boost control A. That's the set. And that's boost control B. So to switch between the two, you just click left or you click right. And that's going back to A. I've uh, A set at 12.5. I've B set at uh, 10.5. I'm pretty happy the way I've set A up. So we can go and try and set up B. Okay, so I'm going to hold the center border, set center border in. It's going to beep. It's going to set, set off. Okay, I'm going to hold right. Okay, now you can go from PSI. That's lock. Okay, so there's PSI. Hit PSI. You can go up to KPA or PSI. Uh, pounds per square inch or um, kilopascals. Okay, hit that again. That's locked in. Um, AI on. AI on is um, when you're changing gear or when you're in um, boost, it will show you what your boost pressure is. Um, just leave it on. It's, it's, it's good to have it on. Um, I actually want it on, so it's on. Perfect. So I'll go next. Lock is off. Uh, the reason why lock is off is you put lock on, you cannot adjust your boost pressures on the fly. You kind of want to do that, so we'll leave that alone. And then that's it. Back to the set. so you're going to hold this again. You're going to hold right. It's going to bring you back. Now let's bring it back to there. Now I'm going to hold left. Okay, this is my. This is my offset value. Uh, the range, it ranges from 0 to 100. Uh, the default setting is 10%. As the percentage increases, the boost value increases. As the percentage decreases, the boost value decreases. Um, so it's just the offset of what you set the boost to. So um, if you have the boost at 12 PSI and you set it to 10%, the boost value will increase by 10%. That is all that is saying. And if you decrease it, obviously it will be decreased. Okay, we don't want to touch that. I like having it at 10. It doesn't really uh, affect. Uh, response value is 20. Um, there is, again, it's 0 to 100. The default setting is 20. Um, as the input value increases, the boost um, increases sooner. Um, overshooting and or unstable boost pressure may occur. Um, as a result, uh, value changes, the boost slightly changes as well. So, um, as the input value increases, the boost increases sooner. So, I have mine at 20. So, I want to increase my boost. Okay, so I'm going to increase. So, it's going to come in 50% harder now. This is my over boost value. Um, the setting range, I'll just turn this down. Um, the setting range, 0 to um, 36 PSI. Default setting is 11.6 PSI. Uh, mine at the minute is 7.2 PSI because I was testing it out and I changed it. Um, the boost can, um, can be set to maximize the turbine performance regarding the offset value and response value. As the, in as the increased value, it may overshoot and overset the value sentence. Now, stock on this car is 10 PSI. So I'm just going to set mine to a safe 10 PSI, which means that in when I'm in boost, um, when I'm in function A, um, I'll be at 12 and a half. And if I ever want to turn it down, uh, I'll be in B, and I'll be at stock at 10 PSI. So I'm going to leave that at that, which is next. I'm holding right. But I didn't hold it for long enough. Okay, now that is set. Now we want to set our warning. So again, you're going to hold right. It's going to show. Uh, sorry, actually, no. Okay, 
Okay, so now we want to set our warning. So you're going to hold left. You're going to go across. RSP. You're going to go OPT. You're going to go to warning. Okay, so now the warning is 11.6. So um, I'm going to actually just move it to 11. That's one PSI um, different to what I have. So she will boost 50% uh, harder to 10 PSI. And then because I've set it so high, and I don't know where that's going to act. Um, once it gets to 11 PSI, I'll get a warning saying she's overshooting her boost value, 11 PSI. I know stock, these can handle 14 PSI, so I'm not too worried if it overboosts. This is just to give me a, a more of a baseline calibration to see how 50% of the response value will, will affect it. Um, so I'm going to set it at that. That's perfect. And that's it done. You now switch on the car, set the fucking PSI to... 36 and go blow up your engine. Please don't. Um, I won't. I, I'm not. Held, I'm not going to be held accountable if you do blow your engine. But um, at the same time, you can set it. You can have a bit of fun. You can get more power out of your car.